called to me local tonight in Liverpool for a glass of bitter. And the manager said to me, Eddie, why don't you come in here regular like you used to and play darts with your wife? <laughs> I said, her head's gone blunt. <laughs> And he was, uh, he was looking dead miserable, you know. I said, what's wrong? He said, well, uh, somebody stole the coloured television out of the lounge last night. I said, well, I'm not surprised. You put it where everybody could see. <laughs> hey, you know, years ago, you know, years ago when he used to, uh, you know, before the young fellas were made, uh, And he used to chop their heads off. This fellow was there, you know, <laughs> blindfolded, his hands behind his back like that, you know. <laughs> and got to about quarter to nine, you know, and the warden says, uh, <laughs> the warden says, it looks as though the executioner is going to be late. You might as well take a walk around the block. <laughs> 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 This Irish fellow was there. <laughs> this Irish fellow was swimming the channel. And he got 50 yards from France and his arms were in half eating. <laughs> he said the fellow on the boat won't make it. So he swam back. <laughs> The wife's just come back off a world cruise, you know. I said, what was it like? She says, ah. <laughs> she said, I wouldn't go again. I want to go somewhere else, you know. This Irish fellow worked in Ford's car factory. <laughs> now and again. <laughs> and he went on strike one day. And he got home about uh, 11 o'clock in the morning and couldn't see his missus anywhere. So he dashed upstairs and she was in bed with this fella. So he dashed to the wardrobe and he got a big revolver out. And he put it to his head. <laughs> and his wife started laughing. <laughs> he said, what are you laughing at? You're next. <laughs> Two Irish fellas. <laughs> Two Irish fellas walking to Hyde Park, and there's a fella on a soapbox. Don't you forget, don't you ever forget, that the afflicted are compensated. You take the deaf, got marvellous eyesight, they're compensated. And take somebody they can't speak too well, you can use their hands, they're compensated. And Pat said to Mick, he knows what he's talking about, that fella. Mick said, what do you mean? He said, well, they... Uh, Take a fellow with one short leg. The other one's longer. So does the office. This Irish fellow went to a joiner. She says, eh. He said, I want a wooden box making. He says, an inch wide, an inch deep, and 30 yards long. <laughs> and the jury says, what do you want it for? He says, I'm sending the clothesline on to me, ma'am. <laughs> but it all depends on your neighbours, doesn't it, how happy you are. <laughs> As a fella lives next door to me, I hate him. Be honest. No, his garden's immaculate. 
You know, he's got a fly mo. <laughs> <laughs> you know them long simmers for the edge of the lawn? And prunes. And he's always swanging about it like, and he makes a point. And when my missus comes out to hang the washing house, he's dirty with the pruners. You know, where's Eddie? It's nothing to do with him, has it? <laughs> and my missus says, oh, he's somewhere in the grass. There always comes a time, ladies and gentlemen, when them people need you. <laughs> because, as I say, you got a smashing car, fly mo, and simmers and pruners and that. And he's not even on the phone. <laughs> and he come home the other day, and there's no sign of his missus. So he went upstairs and she's lying on the bed there and just her briefs in her bra and she's sh shaking and saying, sweating cobs. He said, what to do? She'd have had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes to our house, you know. So yeah, he can use your phone. He said, the wife's had a heart attack. So he's dialing 999 with the ambulance and one of his kids comes and said, hey dad, my uncle Charlie's in the wardrobe there with no clothes on. So he slammed the phone down, you know. I said, oh, I take it easy with the phone. <laughs> and he ran back in her house like... <laughs> into the bedroom and I followed him. And he went to the wardrobe and he said, hey, Charlie, what's the score? <laughs> Charlie said, what do you mean? He said, well, there's the wife there, lying on the bed, just had a heart attack. <laughs> he said, and you're running down the house like that, frightening the kids. <laughs> this scouser, this Liverpool fella, went to Blackpool during the busy season. He was screaming out for kooks. <laughs> And he went to this hotel. I said to the manager, any chance of a job as a cook? So the manager says, have you done any hotel work before? He says, yes, certainly. He says, I've worked all the best hotels in Great Britain. He says, a matter of fact, I was a chef on the Queen Mary for 12 years. Well, the manager says, I can't just take you away for it. You'll have to show you what you can do. So this scouser says, give us an egg. <laughs> So the man gave him an egg and he flicked it up in the air, caught it on his head, spun it round, flicked it off his head onto his shoulder, off his shoulder onto his knee, off his knee onto his foot, and he booted it right across the kitchen and it landed right on the edge of a frying pan, split in two, the egg went in and fried, and two hours his shell dropped in a bucket. <laughs> The manager says, marvellous. He says, do you have to do that? Because my eyes deceive me. This guy says, give another egg. <laughs> he said, I'll do it a different way for you. So the manager gave him another egg and he flicked it up in the air, crossed it on the head, spun it round, and it rolled right down his back, driving it down the back of his leg, onto his heel, and he flicked it over his head. <laughs> And it went right across the kitchen again. Landed on the edge of a frying pan, split in two, the egg went in and fried, and two out the shell dropped in the bucket. The man said, marvellous, he says. I've never seen anything like it in my life. So this scouser said, do you get the job? He said, no chance, you mess about too much. <laughs> oh, this fella come over to Liverpool for the job on the buses, and the inspector says, Mick, have you drove buses before? He says, I have. All over the world. And in Ireland. <laughs> He said, all right, Mick, he said, start tomorrow at two o'clock. I mixed the air, half past one. 
<laughs> and he's supposed to say, well, hello, Paul Mick. He said, we conduct it. He said, we don't have conductors in Liverpool. It's all one-man buses. He said, no, I've done that before. He said, it's dead easy. All you do is take the money and away you go. <laughs> I haven't told you. <laughs> it's me mum. <laughs> so Mick gets in the bus and about ten minutes later there's a phone call. There's one of your buses right through CNA Mode's window. <laughs> you expect to dash it down there and there's Mick sitting there smoking. <laughs> See what happened Mick? He said, I don't know. He said, I was upstairs getting the face. <laughs> I was in the club last night, you know, and I said to the waitress, you know, I said, yeah, pints are bitter, give it a ten pound note to get what you like yourself. She went out and got a trouser suit. <laughs> Just been down south there. It's garbage. Doing the sports day at a nudist camp. Should have seen him doing the sack race in polythene bags. <laughs> and the relay race was a scream. One fella got dragged 400 yards. <laughs> hey, uh, these, uh, these two fellas are on safari. And go to the jungle, you know, with a big load of porters behind them, carrying all their stuff, you know. And he said, we made camp here. So we made camp, you know. And he woke up at 8 o'clock in the morning. And all the porters had gone. I took all everything, you know. Just left them two rifles and a chip pan. <laughs> <laughs> and one said to his mates here, hey, she was starved to death. He said, let's see if we can get some food. He says, you go up that path there. <laughs> and I'll go up that path there. And we'll meet you there in ten minutes. And we met in ten minutes. I'm always carrying a big sack. He said, how'd you go on? He said, well, there. I go to the jungle there. And seen this fella selling King Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> So I got a sack and two pound of onions. <laughs> he said, so we'll have chips and onions. So they lit the fire, you know, peel the potatoes and dice the onions, you know. He says, how are we going to want for dripping? <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, you, you go up that path there and try and get an animal, he says. And we get the fat off it. I'll nip up here and try and get a paper. <laughs> <laughs> so one of them come back, you know. He said, How'd you go on? He says, hey, I got this pygmy. He says, Only 18 inches tall and weighed about 22 stone. <laughs> He said, well, I'll tell you what, he says, put it on the spit. Put him on the spit and turn him slow like that. So that the flames melt him and drips on his chips. <laughs> <laughs> he said, we're back in a minute, I'm just going to the lab. No. <laughs> when he come back, there's his mate like that. He said, I told you to turn him slow. He said, it was, but he was pinching the chips. <laughs> this
This fella lives in a tenement in Kirby. <laughs> so Liverpool, you know, the Ponderosa. <laughs> and he won £250,000 on the pools. And this reporter from Granada said to him, what are you going to do with it? He says, I'll put a couple of pounds to it and pay the rent. <laughs> when you got your school report you know at the end of the term and you'd be also on the way home <laughs> history 10 out of 10 arithmetic 10 out of 10 English 10 out of 10 all 10 out of 10 and he couldn't alter the teacher's writing. And on the bottom he'd say, if he paid attention, he could do better. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>